give people the tools and techniques and capabilities so they can actually get something done instead of binge watching and gaining about 10 to 15 pounds while they're sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> Check out the website, survivethequarantine.com. It is a uh, amazing website. He's got all sorts of things going on over there. So uh, th- this book, uh, talk to me a little bit about the, uh, the writing process for this book. So what, what I understood is that, is that I was in the process of launching my book, which I had the opportunity to talk to you guys about just a little bit ago. Yes. And uh, launched it on, on March the 17th. You talk about the worst headwinds I could launch anything in. And, uh, you know, I just call it like, like a whisper in a hurricane problem. Anyway, in the process of developing that launch plan, uh, sitting there with my co-author, my, my business partner, I said, you know, we got to get this, this book out about remote work. three continents, five countries. We brought people together and said, how do we write this and get it done in two weeks? And we did it. Wow. In fact, we launched it on a, on a two-and-a-half-hour Zoom call, and I was sitting in, the, in a parking lot uh, on a cell phone doing a – this time productive. Fantastic. Fantastic. John Paul Mendoza with us today. He joins us live here on Skype Audio to discuss his incredible, incredible book. So uh, what do you want readers to take away from your writing of this great book? Well, I, I, what I want them to do is understand that, first off, you don't need to be isolated. You don't need to be unproductive. And more importantly, that this isn't just a drill, right? Life, there's no rehearsal. This is it. And that means that we've got to understand that when we get through with this on the other side, I believe this isn't a deflection. Deflection is, you know, we go in a different direction and it snaps back. I think this is an inflection. We're going to see more remote work than ever before because there's three reasons why remote work is going to become more and more dominant. And if you don't understand how to do it well, you're going to be left behind. It is a uh, amazing time we live in. We have got a, a great guest with us today, and uh, w- with this book, uh, w- what what is what is some of your goals for this book? Well, one of my goals for the book is is to make sure that that, that you that your listeners, everyone, understands that we can do things today that we couldn't do five or ten years ago. If this had happened ten or fifteen years ago, we'd have a whole different mindset. Today, though, using a service like Zoom, using the discussions and the insights that we provide, you can literally do meaningful work. You can actually work with people anywhere on the planet. You can go out there and get your message out. More importantly, we even talk about, think about this. We talk about how to interview people for a job, and we teach you how how to be interviewed for a job via Zoom. And that alone will give you at least something to do while you're sitting here going, well, wait a second, I don't know if I'm going to have a job on the other side. Well, hone those skills. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, what's been some feedback you've gotten on the book so far with, with well, as far as positive reviews, negative reviews, things like that? Well, you know, the unexpected one is, is, is always fascinating. Just released the book on Amazon, and it's by the way, it's ninety nine cents. We tried to make it so everybody gets cheaper than going to Starbucks. And what what first review we got? Seventy eight year old grandmother, Pennsylvania. She goes, "This book gave me the confidence." I got on Zoom. I started working through this thing. She reached out and connected with us via our website. We've talked to her. Here's the thing: seventy eight. She got all of her senior friends together. They're doing Bible study via Zoom. She's now connecting with her grandchildren. She's now working to have, you know, family gatherings. Reached out and told her her pastor, you know what, we don't have to shut down. We can go use this. That was an unexpected piece of feedback that we never thought we'd get. Fantastic stuff. Now, uh, t- talk to me about the uh, the writing process. You mentioned you, you brought all these people together and uh, you, you tried to get this book done as quick as humanly possible. Everybody, everybody got a piece that they had to do and, and started writing, but we had to try to turn it into one voice to the best of our ability, and we gave ourselves a two-week deadline. And in two weeks, we assembled it's well over 100 pages, so it's not a pamphlet, lots of pamphlets on Amazon, but it's a real book. And what we did is we, we sat down and, and we actually did a read-through. 
just as if your readers were going to see it. We did a read-through, five and a half hours on Zoom. Again, everybody attended, all those time zones, all those countries. And then what we did is we spent another day and a half, and we launched it. So in essence, in less than three weeks, we got a book from inception to finished, and then worked at getting it up onto Amazon. That was probably one of the toughest hurdles, getting it on Amazon, because we wanted to talk about coronavirus on the cover, and Amazon said, no, that's a bad thing to talk about. <laughs> so we had to decide on how to get it up there, you know? Well, and, and yeah, there's there's all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of things that can be said with that, but uh, this book uh, you 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 put a lot of time and effort into this. Uh, talk to me about some of the different people that helped you with this book. So one of our co-authors is a, is a gentleman by the name of Tom Malosh. Tom has uh, expertise in uh, Facebook advertising, but not only that, he has worked to uh, train people in a certain type of programming called Agile. And he has worked with, of the Fortune 5, not 500, 5, he's worked with two of those. Um, and he's been doing really remote work for about 15, 20 years. So he brought his expertise, but also how to make it a better experience. We want the technology, we want to get everybody so good that the technology fades into the background, that it's really the communication. It's just like you and I are having right now. We'd have the same conversation if we were sitting there, you know, and there's a there's a bowl of pretzels and a couple of beers. We'd be having this conversation, but we want to have that same kind of feel when you're when you're doing a remote meeting. It is a uh, great guest with us today. He joins us live here in a broadcast. Well, I I remember years and years ago uh, when I when I built uh, built this radio studio essentially out of you know parts that I gathered together, and I had all sorts of people you know making fun of me and mocking me and everything. And I'm like, and I look at the radio industry now, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I win in the end. And uh, <laughs> it's the same thing here with you guys. Uh, you guys have come up with all sorts of things here that, uh, you know, people are having to get used to the new normal, essentially. Well, right. And what I don't want them to have to go through is that, you know, I moved out of a corporate office many years ago and started doing just like you did. I built a space in my house. So my commute when I'm home is, 16 steps. So all I really need is a strong cup of coffee and I can make the distance. That's all I need. Now, the important part about it is that is that I don't want people to go through that same kind of learning curve and those kinds of challenges. And on top of it, we want to show them how to plan it. Here's a real quick, simple formula. We want you to think about what you're going to do before you have that virtual meeting, that remote meeting. Then we want you to have the meeting and get the best possible results. And then we want to show you what to do after you've had it. See, the, the, the centerpiece, which is the meeting, is where most of the technology people focus. But really, it's the planning ahead of time and then what you're going to do after it and how vital and important that is and what you can do with it, especially if your listeners are thinking, well, I'd like to get my message in and create content. Well, I can tell you we create content every single day by using these kinds of methods. Well, it definitely is a uh, is is a heck of a process. So, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, where you see this book going. What 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 do you see people using this book for that that you never envisioned? Well, what I see is is that remote work is really a tip of a bigger iceberg. The iceberg is virtualization. I see that businesses are going to go to virtualize. I said before there are three positive things that happen from virtualization. Number one is if you own or run a business, you're going to cut costs. Isn't that a good idea? The second thing is you're going to increase profitability. And the third thing is, and if you're interested in this, is that if you want to reduce the greenhouse gases, you're into any of that, this is the fastest, best way to do it. You don't even have to plug in a, you know, and charge up your car. I mean, I don't need to worry about range anxiety. Like I said, I got 16 steps I got to make. So it changes that mix, and really, here's the cherry on the Sunday because I know everybody likes a little cherry on the Sunday. Is this? You're going to change how you feel about yourself because you're going when you're working, you're working, but then you can then have some different experience and different downtime. Those who really get good at remote work don't have the anxiety and fear that they're sitting there in the office in that cubicle going, 
Uh-oh, do I look busy enough? Uh-oh, does anybody look, watch me? Uh-oh. Because the hardest thing is to even even just think. You know, I, I once had, I always had a person who sat there, and he and whenever he had a little bit of free time, he would read. And the boss man comes to me and says, John, you got to fire him. I said, why is that? He goes, it doesn't look like he's working. I said, okay, well, let me go get him. Let me go get him a toy that he can spin or something so you can say, oh, he's doing something. Thinking is really working. Think is important. So what I hope it's going to do is get us to virtualization, which is a very powerful concept. We have got a great guest with us today, uh, Survive the Quarantine, How to Thrive in the Post-Coronavirus Economy Through Remote Work. And uh, the author, one of the many authors, joins us today here in the broadcast. So spotlight some of the other folks that, that were involved in this and that, that you uh, consulted to, to put this whole thing together. Uh, one of them is, is very proud of my brother, Michael, and he is uh, he's the guy who tells people how to go out and get jobs. He's been in the recruiting business looked at 65,000 resumes, and what he did is he went through and talked about how to interview somebody, if you're going to interview somebody who's a remote, uh, in a remote location, and how to understand how to do that to do a better screening, and then also teach people how to uh, be interviewed so that way they can get a job. That's a real positive. Uh, another one is, uh, is my, my partner, uh, Gabe Batista. Gabe has very close ties with, uh, with Latin America. In fact, because of Gabe, we ended up bringing a young man, Fritz, who uh, 22 years old. He's in Peru right now. He's in lockdown. Now, see, they got a different lockdown method than, than we have here in the states because if the police get you out on the street, they arrest you. You know, so he was able to come in and help us put together the book, and that and that's outstanding. And he was able to do that remotely like that. Uh, so, so the, those are some of the the, the folks that, that we had in this uh, in this project. It's pretty amazing. I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on, and uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you as we uh, move down the line with this whole thing. Always great. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me back on, and wish great success to all your listeners. Definitely. Thank you, Thank you my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, brother. There he goes, John Paul Mendoka. Ooh.